Yo, Pen Friend Friends, happy weekend. It's me, Max, from Pen Friends. <laughs> Woo, yeah, <laughs> Oh, yeah. Thank you, adoring live studio audience. Uh, we're back with another video announcement uh, by popular demand. Yes, there was an overwhelming, there was at least two of you that said that uh, you preferred if we had a video rather than uh, a, a text-based announcement. I'm, I don't think you're being sarcastic. I'm assuming that you were not being sar sarcastic and that you actually did want me to make a video. But but now that I think about it, you probably were being sarcastic. Anyways, I, I'm making one. This is it. You're watching it. And uh, you're going to sleep well tonight. I, <laughs> I promise you. So, um, a lot has changed since we last spoke. Uh, since I was angrily rambling in my garage about how high market cap ETH NFT projects had kind of poisoned the well for all of us and I was mad about that and now here we are and it is a new day the Solana ecosystem is currently euphoric people are being just handed money and I'm not really sure why but you know just don't overthink it just be glad about it it's awesome um the coin season is upon us the airdrop season and it's glorious and i think that uh the stigma of solana as a second class citizen is long gone at this point this is such a <laughs> this is such a roller coaster of a space um uh, which i kind of love about it. i mean i hate it too but i also love it and um you know once the the narrative starts to change and you become the it place uh, it happens quickly and people come on board fast and we're seeing that, you know, and uh, and I think although we've seen it in the last, you know, week or maybe two weeks on the NFT side of things before that we were seeing it on um, in terms of coins, I think, and, and DeFi and um, airdrops, we're seeing uh, some really fun, interesting things. And so. You know, for us, it's like, how do we take the the current climate, the conditions in the current climate, and um, incorporate those and and make the most out of those and what we're working on. Um, and so we have made some changes, I would say, in terms of our planning based on those realities. And uh, and I'm super excited about all of it to be honest and i and i'm probably caught up a bit in this current euphoria but it's hard not to be um we all feel vindicated i think for having been here for the last two years for having not left you know a year ago any of you that were heavily invested in the space and you didn't call it quits um a year ago you know uh we're all being rewarded for our staying power um you know and for our our faith in Solana and um, and we're looking like geniuses right now. And, you know, we uh, that's always nice. I say that's always nice as if it's happened like a lot of times to me. Um, and yeah, it totally has. Anyways, um, I do want to remind you guys quickly that we uh, the bonk staking for pen friends is ongoing. Uh, the first 30 days is ending in about five days. Um, but given that we have 186 or so wallets and the threshold is 150, I, I fully expect that we will get at least another 30 days. And um, uh, I think we'll get the full 90. Unless a bunch of people pull their bonk out and sell it, I think we'll get the full 90, um, which... Per pen friend, it's not a massive number, but um, it's definitely worth it in my opinion. And uh, if you have questions about that, there are some information, a couple announcements above this one, or you can ask in chat anytime. In particular, ask Frosty, and uh, you can kind of figure out some of the math there and see. It's not free money. There are fees associated with staking and unstaking, um, but currently it is well worth it. Um, 
you know, if you net out 20 bucks, you may not care. Um, but, you know, you might just say, ah, just hold on to that and see what that becomes because that might turn into two grand in a year. Who knows? Um, I think there's a lot of big plans for Bonk and it has huge potential. And I think that we, we got into that uh, grant at the right time. And honestly, like these things happen same thing uh with cyber frogs and and getting involved with the thor thing there which you should also check that out there's information above we have some discounts there because we have a relationship with them and in our community holds a frog and it's staked there so you get a little break over what you would pay as just a normie um these things uh, which are not necessarily open to everybody they start to happen because You've been here for a while, you know, you start to uh, capitalize on that or be rewarded for uh, being around um, for really two years. Like I, I started buying soul in November of 2021, <laughs> which was like the very, very, very top. So uh, I got that going for me, uh, which is great. And, um, you know, so to still be here. Um, and to see these, you know, different drops and things like that, rewarding people who've been here for a long time and been using these tools is awesome. And it brings everybody together and it, and it, it creates massive FOMO outside. Right. And I think that's, and I think that's what we're seeing. We're seeing now, in my opinion, or my perspective, I guess, is that people are coming in, um, chasing after these coin pumps you know and and solana as well more so than nfts that may change but um we've been watching that closely and saying okay these people are coming into the space and they may or may not be nft traders they may or may not be interested in nfts or see them as too volatile or whatever but they're into the coins and like what can we do you know what can we do that can appeal to them and i think that's one of the things that we've targeted with our game development uh for going forward is zeroing in on on coins and stepping back from the nft part of things um and i'll, I'll explain what i mean a bit uh, about that um you know we've run camp three times camp i i should mention just to recount camp was a 0.33 soul mint um, at a time when soul was significantly cheaper than it is now. And most people that held the minted campers did not pay for them. We gave away thousands to pen friends holders. We gave away thousands to trip and ape holders. Um, and uh, the 2,500 or so that were minted for soul that's what created the 700 soul uh, prize pool it was all paid out so there was no treasury from that it just was it had no real promise of a longer term future we said there will be another camp session at some point and we've run it three more times um i don't say that to now say that we're sunsetting camp i don't no we're not going to do that um we've played around with the a few different ideas of how to better camp, but, there, but we identify some problems with camp. Um, and we are, you know, we, we are actively working on trying to rectify those problems. And, and we've tried to, to deal with them in a number of different ways through the different versions of camp. So, um, you know, those problems really stem from there's thousands of campers out there that are in dead wallets or, you know, trip and ape tribe holders that never even knew that they received them um, is probably a fair way to say it because when camp was free to register, um, if you held a camper, why wouldn't you just register? If it was free, uh, you'd have a chance at winning. You would expect to see um, significant numbers in that case. And we didn't see that. And the only conclusion we can really draw from that is that, you know, um, active wallet number is down and also um, 
you know, people don't watch these discords anymore. So, you, you know, you might have been paying attention a year ago when things were good and then in, in the bear and things are bad and it makes you sad to look at the in- announcements or lack thereof in projects or to look at floor price or lack thereof in projects. Like you don't even want to go there and see what's going on. So you have people who really aren't paying attention to the messaging and you have a, all these dead wallets. I mean, there's a whole bunch of campers out there that, are, that, that uh, um, people either don't know they have or they've just kind of given up. And we're seeing now some people come back, which is, which is great. Um, but looking at that and saying, okay, so that's on the one side is you have all these people who hold one or two campers, and but they're not really in the space anymore. And then you have sort of the active players who are like, oh man, campers are dirt cheap and they're scooping them, right? And they've been scooping for many months. And so we have um, the game being, has been played in a way that we never intended where it was like, some people have 40, 50, 100, 200 campers. And that's not, that's not what, <laughs> that's not the way we meant to be. And, and, you know, fair play to you guys like that. There's nothing wrong with you. The, if they were cheap. You want to do that. You were always free to do that. Um, but we kind of envisioned a world where, you know, you and we and we built the tools out with this in mind where you would have a camper or a smaller number of campers, two, three, four, five, and you would customize them to look the way you wanted. We had names in the first version of it. And um, we wanted you to ha- create a person and you would rep the project that was you know, near and dearest to you uh, in terms of a logo on your shirt. Like, like we wanted you, um, to connect with your camper or campers and kind of live and die with them. Like that's what made it exciting. And I know that that happens kind of later in the game, but it's not now, but it's not, it's not the same, you know, like when, um, Javier was posting in the chat about, you know, Roberta is here and, uh, you know, hopefully that FUD doesn't come here. And it was re- like to him, his camper was called Roberta and like all his eggs are in that basket. And he was and he was posting in discord about Roberta. It's like I wanted Roberta to win because that was the spirit, you know, in which camp was <laughs> meant to be played. Right. Or it was like, this is my camper. This is I've sponsored this camper. I want this. I have a connection with this camper or s- small number of campers. And, uh, you know, I, I feel sad when they die and not just like a nameless, faceless, whatever. And, you know, and, and what we saw as camp has gone on, um, is that people accumulated more campers and then they run them out and they don't use, you know, this, the customization tool, which you spent so much time on, people don't really use it because they don't have that connection. So they don't care. And they're not they have access to a bunch of different animations, but they don't use them. And it really just becomes about, well, I'll throw out, you know, 50 campers. And after three days, let's see who's still alive. And, and maybe I'll, you know, kind of sort them out. Um, But it's not the same, you know, Um, we tried involving other collections in order to, um, get participation up. Um, but you know, I, what we ran into when we started to do that, which was in August, um, was that every discord community was really having a similar problem, which was, there wasn't much going on, you know, like there was, they were dead. The, the enthusiasm in general was just at such an all time low. The energy was at an all time low participation in in uh, events and things like that were just at an all-time low also you know if you held this is probably always going to be true if you held a or hold an nft that has significant value and that becomes your pass to play in a game that you're connecting to on a on a website that you don't really know like you're going to be scared of that right like like mad lads was a a partner in the second version of camp and they donated prizes and 
we didn't have a lot of mad lads that participated in the game. And I don't really blame them because it's it's scary to connect to outside websites, right? Um, and if that if your participation is gated by the NFT and you have to do that, then you know you're taking that chance. Um, obviously, we're not stealing anybody's stuff, but uh, they don't know that. And so um, I completely understand, you know, people being hesitant to to do that. And um, now at the same time, we did get communities in. We got prizes added to the daily prize pool. We got people exposed to the project that weren't before. And that was great. But another thing that was happening in all this is like we were spending weeks and months really um running camp improving camp and running camp and some time promoting camp and creating promotional materials for camp and really at the end of the day it did nothing for pen friends you know it was not um in a lot of cases like the connection wasn't even really made there and the then the game to this point has not been profitable where it mattered to pen friends holders in terms of being like a source of rev share. And, and so when we look at that and we say, man, like it almost feels like we've been treating camp, like the primary collection, um, and, and pen friends as the secondary, whereas camp was really meant to be not necessarily a one-off, but it was a, a build as a special event collection that we would run at least twice. We've run it four times. I do want to continue to run it, but I don't want it to be our focus at, you know, at the, to the detriment of pen friends. It doesn't make any sense. Um, now that said, uh, we like working on it and we feel like there's massive potential there to do all of these things that we really want to do. You know, um, we want to tell stories. In the first version of camp, you know, we had, I don't know, 15, 16 minutes of story in there. We spent a lot of time uh, and it was fun. Um, and, you know, there was Jay's character sponsoring his son and Taffy and the bus. And, you know, we were really explaining the mechanics of the game, but we we're doing it through like within the context of this unfolding story and every time a zone burned it was new now the second time when you run camp you can't really trot that out again as if it's new it's not we've seen that you know if we were like uh it was a brand new audience i mean maybe but um you know we tried to repackage it a little bit and make it recut and turn out some new marketing stuff but really at the end of the day it's the same story and it plays out a little bit differently every time because it's not because it's true random, but um, you know, in terms of like the setup and uh, establishing the premise and uh, the players and the mechanics and all that, um, that's really telling the same story. So it was like we want to tell stories, but we we don't want to retell the same story over and over again, and we don't want pen friends to be playing second fiddle to camp and we want to um build towards something where we are appealing to a wider audience in particular this audience that's growing because of um an influx of people into the space that's inevitable because of what's going on with the coins and the airdrops and all that kind of stuff right massive fomo in there the way there was for nfts you know two years ago so how do we solve all these problems that we don't like we don't like that people play with 50 unarmed campers we don't love that right there's no personal connection there it's a low entertainment value it's really it's it's not what we intended so how do we how do we solve that how do we solve the pen friend situation um, how do we capitalize on this influx of new people how do we grow the player base we look at what people spend um in camp and the average is a decent number you know if we look at i think the 
the lowest average for any session of camp was the equivalent of about 30 bucks US. Um, so if you extrapolate that and you say, okay, if we have a thousand players, you know, that's 30 grand in a session. Um, if you imagine that we split that 15K to the winners, 15K to the community and team, you can say, okay, a thousand, I can see, I can see how a thousand players will be a, a nice number. Then you can see how 2,000 players would be a nicer number and 5,000 and 10,000 and so on. And you can imagine a path where if the game is fun and rewarding, as the player base grows, like the NFT portion of it, the pen friends version of it, portion of it, the value of holding is that you're getting a piece of that pot regardless of if you even play, right? You know that you're going to win, not to the same extent as the, as the five winners or however many it is in a given session, but you're always benefiting from the game going on. And as the game grows, so too will your personal take from it. And I think that's how it should be where participation in the game we don't want to gate it behind an NFT. We don't want to make it that you have to own a pen friend or a camper or any of that. We want to attract these people that are coming to the space that come into, let's say they, they get into a project and they get a, a bon they end up staking for bonk. We would love to run a, game session at some point that is entirely within the realm of that operates with bonk as it's as its primary currency as its only currency the winners are paid out in bonk the community and team take from the game is in bonk and that we can build a treasury together that is not necessarily always about soul we could do a game for ETH. We could do a game for you name it, any token you want. We can do them for individual projects, of course, NFT projects, but also we'd be targeting these coins and, um, you know, more traditional things like, like ETH and Soul. Um, but using all of them as a means of accumulating a community treasury and then can we roll that that wallet you know can we depending on what the community wants to do with the funds that are in that wallet do they want to rev share them straight away do they want to put some in the uh thor protocol that we have going with the cyber frogs now which if you if you haven't checked that out and you're just hearing this for the first time because you refuse to read anything and you only want to hear it from a, from a boring announcement video. Uh, we are partnered with the Cyber Frogs and they do offer soul staking through their bot. It has a pretty solid track record and we've got some community funds in there with them right now that we voted on. Um, but as we, as we offer these games and have this revenue coming in, it's really up to the community to vote and say, okay, let's take this do we want to take this much and give it to you know let's let's say 20 let's say 20 percent. give it to the thor trading bot let it run do you want to take this and stake it with you know um jupiter or whomever and that that community wallet that's doing all of this volume um that that ends up being not only is it a means of making money um, for everyone, but it also potentially is a means of um, achieving some really significant airdrops because we've seen like people make crazy money from these airdrops. So imagine if you have this wallet that's larger than any of ours individually would be, maybe outside of Frosty, um, doing significant volume and, and uh, you know, ultimately being the beneficiary of 
of future airdrops, which are then shared amongst the community. I think that's pretty cool. Um, but at the at the heart of all this is we need people to play the game, right? We need people to play the game. And um, in our opinion, the game really needs to, whatever the game is, it really has to provide a couple of things. And one of those things is an opportunity for reward. I think that's probably number one. Um, and then the second one is entertainment value. And I think that's, I think that's big for us. I played the heist. There's an opportunity for reward there. If you, if you do it, if you grind, uh, especially if you, for the people who were there first and, you know, they, they maximize their characters early and, you know, they, they made some people made some real money on that. Just kind of, um, enabling the progression of others, like, <laughs> you know, contributing to the progression of other, selling convenience really, I guess is how you might think about it. But the, there isn't a ton uh, or up to this point, there hasn't been a ton of like entertainment value there. Like you kind of, you, you click a couple things and something happens, but there's no like front end to it really. Like there's no visual representation of a capture or failure or anything like that. And that's something that we want to change. And that's something where we want to set the standard. Um, and we've been talking about in previous versions of camp, we wanted to have animated everything, you know, not just your character initially, but we wanted to have animated escapes and animated deaths. And so we've looked at all these things as it relates to the next version of camp Krampus. And we've tried to come up with a solution that solves as many problems as possible and really sets the stage for all these other things going forward. So I guess I'll just address these sort of one at a time. I think one of the things would be um, the issue of having a million campers and just running them out there. We just made that impossible in Krampus. It's not technically impossible but it it would be annoying to try and do it because we've we've limited you to five characters at most per wallet um because we want you to care when they die you know we want you to care what we want you to feel exhilaration when they escape and to that end you know we we wanted to limit you just to the five at the most and I think we're in a lot of places you would, if you limited the the participation by the, in that way, people would jack up the price. We don't want to do that. We want we want this to be in an area where it feels like you get value for your money. Like, okay, I'm in. This is my minimum. This is my minimum to play. This is my maximum if I want to kid out the whole crew. And it's up to you what you want to do in there. But there, but the range isn't massive. Like we're talking about the difference between. Um, you know, five dollars and seventy five dollars equivalent. This is Seoul, obviously, but we're talking. I'm talking about in U.S. dollars equivalent. Um, that that feels good, you know. That feels good to me, and we can give you real value for that. Where at the end, you'd be like, "That was fun. I got my money's worth." Like win or lose, I was entertained by by that process and I, and and that's where that's where we need to be that's where you will tell your friends hey this is pretty fun like win or lose you're gonna have a good time you might get stressed out a bit <laughs> but um ultimately at the end you're gonna be like that was worth it I, I want to do that again and you will participate um in the next round and that's when the stakes aren't crazy high for you i think in most cases some people love that rush but i think for this like we want a lot of people to be in there and we want um so we want to keep that entry uh, simple, not gated by ownership of an NFT. You don't have to own any NFTs ever. You don't have to have ever owned an NFT in your life to play this game. We want to keep it like that. We want to keep the NFT component, like I say, just as a uh, financial, as a means of 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 uh, determining who to send money to. Right? It's a rev share thing. It's not a participation in the game um, thing. The next thing, you know, was the storytelling thing, which I've, I've mentioned a few times. And there's really 
uh, two parts to that. One of them is that um, we've been working on a Web2 job for a while. Jay in particular has done a bunch of uh, through the bear. I mean, you, you have to take work where you can get it. And um, nobody wants to, um, <laughs> to tell their family that they, they got to they got to sell the house because uh, they got into Web3. Um, and uh, through this Web2 job in particular, um, Jay started to draw lineless art, which is to say art without lines. And in his typical style, but the, the efficiencies of animating without lines are considerable. And so, you know, we're able to generate more content uh, with this art style. And so now we're exploring that with Krampus. So when we talk about like, we want to have opportunities for storytelling. One of them is, okay, we need to switch art styles to this one where we can pump things out. And the other part of that is we, you know, with customization and, um, and all the different animations that we have. And then we wanted to like have, we, we, we spent weeks, we added all the escape animations and, we had death animations and all that. It's like, but they have to work with every single trait and every single possible combination because they're, and they have to be generated on the fly. Nothing can be generated in advance. And that, that creates a real bottleneck. You know, we're a three person team and everything tech related really falls on Jeff. So uh, major bottleneck in that regard and became something where I was like, this is not we. It's not feasible for us. You know, it's not realistic for us. And so, you know, we had to, we had to reassess that. We had to reassess that. And especially when we looked at how much did people use the, the, um, uh, the customizer, how, you know, what were people really utilizing it? And if they weren't, then, you know, let's give it a break for this. And so the customizer is not in Krampus. And as we looked at, okay, let's have, you know, as, as we looked, we wanted to add mechanics is the, 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 the camp game is very simple is too simple. Really? We're like, how can we make this more interesting? And, you know, one of those ways is by having, we have it in camp. Really. There are times where you just, you're in a zone and you're just not targeted, but it's not, there's nothing. It obviously it's passive, but also, like you're not even really aware. You're just hoping not to get a notification. And so we thought um, it would be much more interesting if you're in a zone and it gets attacked that everyone in the zone gets attacked. But because obviously that would make items in, in the way that camp worked, that would make items mandatory. And we don't want to do that. We want to give everybody a chance to win, even if they don't purchase items. And so we created mechanics where you can avoid getting killed by chance. So there's an element of chance of being too strong, too fast, or too hidden to be killed by an attack. And so Krampus has attack types, and you have these statistics as your character, your characters have these statistics um, that are defensive in nature and it becomes a dice roll against each other. So what these mechanics do is they introduce the idea of you can survive an attack without an item, which I think is really cool because because now even if late in the game you've burned through some items or you just never wanted to have any, items, everyone has a chance everyone has a chance I think there's more luck in the game now than there was before and I think that's a positive positive. and also there's more game theory now because you can look at it and say oh which of these you know which of these stats is going to prove to be more um, effective within the game in theory it should be completely balanced um, but luck is luck so um, 
by creating these archetypes, um, by making them lineless art, by making them not NFTs anymore, where we're not worrying about uh, a mint price, a floor price, about what happens in terms of dumping, accumulation, all that kind of stuff. We're, at, we're limiting you to one to five of these characters. When they're dead, they're dead. That's the end of the session. And then we begin again uh, in a future one. And it might be completely different. Everything. Um, that this is the way. We have these five archetypes. There is art for each of the archetypes. And it's the same. Not between archetypes, but like <laughs> it's the same for you as it is for me playing. And what that allows us to do is to, and what we're doing right now, which is making animations for all of the possible outcomes in the game. And that when you play the game now, you're going to be watching the game now. That if you're attacked and escape or die, you'll be watching a video to find that information out. You like we've always had Discord um, integration, and you've been watching for things, but now you'll be watching, watching, and these video clips will really be telling the story of your, your of your crew, and um, I think that's fun. I think that's awesome. I don't. I don't. I can't. Think of anyone else that's doing anything like that where you have a game that's being told via animation in real time. It's not that's not super expensive to play. And the game has you know, it, it has like a window of where you're playing it and then you're not. It's it's not necessarily like I think there's a, a, a market and I do actually like those games where they are sort of like endless progression games. Nothing against that at all, but there is something nice about, okay, this is going to run for five days. I'm watching this Discord channel. I'm going to be watching lots of videos and seeing what happens to um, to my crew and probably to some other crews as well. So uh, to us, that's like telling a story. It's like each member of your crew has their, what's their story going to be? Is it going to be that they escaped 12 times? Three times, two times, 19 times. Do they never die? <laughs> Did they die early? Like, what, you know, what happened? I think there's way more um, possibility for um, variation and interesting outcomes, right? It's not a foregone conclusion anymore that if you're targeted and you don't have an item left, that you die. That's out the window. And I think that's really fun. Um, and I think that makes it more dramatic, which is which is a win. So if you think about it in terms of, OK, you're not going to have um, whale play w with hundreds of campers being thrown out there. You're really going to have concentrated small groups where people care. They're not expensive to participate with. And there's a story being revealed that in real time as it goes it's it depends on what happens in the moment of um that dice roll interaction really between your character and krampus and um and yeah we think that's really fun as we continue to develop this uh honestly i just think the sky's the limit for for this i think there's a million people in the space that are um you know, spend time looking at charts and, and they, and they, and they love it and they, and they trade, but sometimes like at school you need recess and this is recess and people can take some of those gains and, and, uh, have some fun messing about and something that's entirely different. Um, take a break from the, um, from the monotony of the chart watching and, and plotting and nothing, no offense to any of that stuff, but you gotta, you got to mix it up now and then. And I think that's, you know, the space that we want to operate in um, and that uh, uh, I'm excited to. And when we, we, as we've developed the Krampus game here, we're like, OK, I, I start to really see the path forward in terms of this being um, something that can be uh, fun and popular 
and uh, and a strong uh, revenue generator. We do um, we do want to continue with camp. Obviously, camp's important. Rewarding loyal holders um, with some staking rewards for camp in terms of free items and things like that um, is something that we will be releasing in the near future. And um, it, it's just I, I think that it's better for us. We're a small team. There's only three of us. And uh, if camp can be run every summer, um, then we're going to have uh, greater participation, um, better rewards, things like that. And um, and uh, it will give us an opportunity to prioritize pen friends and treat pen friends more like the primary collection that it is. And so the other versions of this game that we're building of which Krampus is the first iteration where it's significantly different from the camp Solana that you may have played in the past. Um, this is the first of the sort of pen friends games that will explore the pen friends universe. The, the Krampus game is a juvenile, they're juvenile delinquents um, at a detention center and uh, you know, the games to come will be um, related to pen friends in one way or another. And, um, and we're just going to have some fun exploring this. Jay has drawn a whole bunch of art over the last year uh, as we were sort of experimenting with um, creating something, which is always doing weird stuff. We have about five, different game types that are half finished and uh and a whole bunch of art and so um you know by iterating on um camp that's led us to krampus and krampus is going to lead us to explore more parts of the pen friends universe tell more stories uh you know share more prizes and um create more art and hopefully provide some entertainment and uh, ultimately provide uh, some revenue um, back to holders. So, um, yeah, we're we're excited about all of that, and and the timing of all that feels really good right now. We're going to continue to animate for other projects, um, and as we move back into a more of a bull market situation, there are going to be clients for that again. And you know, our process has been streamlined. Um, also on the static art side, you know, that we, uh, we did that work for defenders and we'd like to do that more. It is fun. Um, and you know, we will get back to doing that, but the, the number of clients available has, you know, really dried up this year as, as projects really just kind of, um, hunkered down and, and tried to survive the bear. And, um, and as, mint start to pop up again and people want to differentiate themselves and um you know new mints two months in want to do something to keep interest high and you know they want to get into uh, to animation that cycle is all going to run itself out again we will do that work we will share that rev and that will be good but i think that it, it's it's also important for us to have something else going at the same time we saw that this year where you know we couldn't have been more euphoric than you know ranging to or agreeing to um to animate 12 collections for the amazon digital marketplace over two years i mean that was a dream deal to us basically and you know not only did we see zero dollars from that we it was worse than that because we spent we animated the first two collections um uh, and never saw a dollar for it. So, you know, um, we've seen the, <laughs> we've, we've, we felt the euphoria before and we felt like we were in a great spot and we had been building to that point saying we're going to animate full collections and we, and we did a bunch and the marketplace stuff didn't really pan out so well. The direct to team stuff, uh, was, was profitable. Um, in most cases outside of Valhalla, which was not, and then um, the Amazon thing uh, really sent us for a loop there last year. And, um, you know, the pivot has been twofold there, which is like, okay, we need to streamline our process. We need to reduce the cost of our process. 
Um, and also we need to diversify our offerings and we've done all three of those things. You know, the diversification has been, we also need to be able to cater to non-animated, um, collections that are pre-mint instead of just post-mint animated. Let's take trait art and cause it, you know, if you, if you have an artist and, or you are an artist and you make a bunch of traits, it's still, it's, you're still a long way from having a, a generative NFT collection of several thousand that's all based on um, the logic of which traits work with which traits, which ones don't and can't never and can never be together, which ones are meant to be legendary, which ones are meant to be common, and so on and so forth. So you got rarity tables and logic. I, I, Jeff wrote hundreds and hundreds of lines of code for. Um, the defenders collection because the way that the art was structured and the results uh everyone seems very happy with and and we like to do that work so we did that um we will continue to do that and we will also continue to offer these games um offer them to the you know the wider public but also offer them to communities in terms of of uh, a white label situation um and continue to build them and make them more interesting enjoyable entertaining and um, and ultimately, we think that that will translate um, into profit. So anyways, uh, if you made it this far, you're a legend. Um, I mean, really, if you made it this far in terms of to December the 9th, 2023, you're a legend. But really, I mean, if this far into the video, uh, what are you what are you doing, man? There's got to be better uses of your of your time, um, but I appreciate it very much, each and every one of you. Um, it's been a challenging year, and I feel like we're on the other side of it now. So that's pretty uh, that's pretty exciting. I hope uh, those of you that choose to participate in Krampus have a good time. And um, as always, uh, we welcome your feedback. Let's get conversations going about everything. Um, some of you DM me with ideas and some of you post them in the chat. Love it all. Keep it, keep it coming. Uh, we win or lose together. Um, and, uh, that's the way it should be. So, um, until next time when I probably try and sneak in a text only announcement again, and then get called out <laughs> once again. Um, love you all pen friends for life.